it that all of you here have in some way or another started uh, read or started on the design thinking assignment and read on the data ethics assignment because this is not meant to be a tutorial it's meant to be a q and a session okay so i anticipate that the questions will be coming from you so who has the first question about any of those assignments? And when I say question, something you have a blocker on or something that's preventing you from feeling confident when approaching the assignment, anything around those lines. Who has any? I'm waiting because this is supposed to be like therapy or a supportive session for someone with questions regarding any of those. Because if you don't have questions, then uh, there's no need to be here. Both of those elements are okay. Let's start with this question from uh, Sim Michael. Sim, please unmute yourself and tell us what, what you've tried. Tell us who you've tried to talk to, who you've reached out to. Um, I've reached out to most of my circle, family members, mm -hmm. friends, mm -hmm. if they know anyone who isn't going to school mm -hmm. so that I could talk to them, mm -hmm. which hasn't happened really. I've tried to talk. I've tried to find somebody who may mm -hmm. be working on education related. Okay project in NGOs yeah um, I have been either it's somebody who is very far away from the data collection process mm -hmm. meaning they're just administrative staff or something like that mm -hmm. or else they're not willing to share their information with me mm -hmm. and that's as far as I've gotten since I haven't been trying as much Okay, so Sam, I want you to imagine a situation where this is a problem you had to solve. You're employed at Google or Amazon or wherever, and you had to talk to your users. What would you do? Would you just go to your boss and say, ah, I tried, I failed, too bad? What would you do? I need ideas, and I also need other people in this room to give us those ideas. What would you do? If I had actual time, I would mm -hmm. contact mm -hmm. town to town mm -hmm. asking mm -hmm. like administrative stuff or mm -hmm. like local governments, mm -hmm. but that's currently not feasible, so mm -hmm. that's about it. Who else is experiencing the same challenge Michael is experiencing? Sam, which country do you live in? I live in Ethiopia. Okay. Do you have street beggars in Ethiopia? Um, yes. Do you have female street beggars in Ethiopia? Okay. Uh, approaching young street beggars is, uh, and trying to ask them questions is not really a feasible like, direction. Most people Why? will think you're... Uh, I've seen people get attacked for a lot less. They think you're a pedophile. Okay. No so, exaggeration. Like, since mm -hmm. I've seen people try, that do social work trying to talk to these kids and it doesn't end well. And okay. I'll, mm -hmm. I would rather stay safe. And Okay. Do you have any sisters or female relatives or friends? Uh, no. No. Mm, uh, yeah, every. Um, my, Everyone in your circle is male. In my household is male. Yeah. So you don't have any female friends or cousins. Uh, I do have female friends. Yes. yes. Okay. The reason I'm asking you these questions is because it will get to a point in your life or your career where the amount of efforts that you're willing to put in will be directly related to the amount of output you will get. If you attended the session with Eugene at the time, 
he said something very specific and he says be the person who gets shit done okay which means that the more creative you are when it comes to finding ways to solve a problem instead of looking for ways where or reasons why it wouldn't work you ask yourself what would it take for it to work okay so let us say you don't let's say your family or your household is all male or approaching a female it doesn't have to be a toddler you're talking to it could be a grown person okay i don't know how it is in ethiopia but let's even remove the situation of doing the whole direct talking the people you say are administrative staff some of them you can find them on linkedin and they don't always have to be people who live in ethiopia okay and you ask them questions so and that is why we gave you an opportunity what kind of questions would you need to ask then you ask yourself yes maybe someone is removed from the situation they're not on the ground but there's some if they're working in the space there's some insights they have about their company about what they've been able about their company about what they've been able to do or achieve or what has worked for them and what has not worked for them this is a very important skill, especially also in networking. Okay, you say, "Hey, I'm working. I'm working to become an ML engineer, and I'm trying to figure out what it will take for us to get more girls in school." I see you're working in with this in this space. Is it okay if I ask you a question or two? Ask for ten or fifteen minutes of the time. Prepare your questions beforehand. See what they say in return. Then you tailor make the question depending on who you will be asking them. The questions you would ask a young person who's directly affected with the lack of school fees are different from the questions you will ask a professional working in that space. You tailor make the thing according to your audience. Okay. You could get a questionnaire, Milky. But that is the easy way out. Okay. Of course, you don't always have to get the hard way out at all times right but i want you to ask yourself how many people will you need to send that questionnaire to and what kind of information are you trying to get and is, is the person you're trying to get that question from that information from how likely are they to fill in a questionnaire okay i'm going to ask you a very specific question milky and i want you to unmute yourself okay when was the last time you filled in a questionnaire Milky. Hello? Can you hear me? Hi, when was, yes. When was the last time you filled in a questionnaire or a simple survey? Last month, I, I think. Mm. Okay. So when you say as much data as possible, are you likely to fill in a long questionnaire that requires you to write paragraphs or are you likely to fill in a short questionnaire? Uh, I'm thinking of a, a short questionnaire. Okay. Uh, Do you have the first question? Okay. Go on. The first, the first question being a classifying question, like, uh, asking them if they uh, attended the school or not, and uh, to what level they attended. Mm -hmm. If they, if they have like, uh, if they have passed through secondary school, we won't use that data. We, we, we really don't need that. But if they are below that, we will ask them additional questions like, why did they quit? Uh, what were the challenges they faced? Mm -hmm. And uh, a short description of uh, the challenges they faced, or if they, if they have an additional information they want to share with us. Mm. OK. So I want you to ask yourself about the persona of someone who's likely not going to school. Are they likely to have a smartphone that they can fill in on the phone? Are they likely to be interested in filling in a questionnaire? Where will you find them? And how many of them will you know for it to make sense? Uh, I think a lot think. of people, I think a lot of the people, a lot of uneducated people uh, do have uh, mm. mobile device and uh, uh, electronic devices that, that can be used to fill this uh, questionnaire and uh, Mm -hmm. uh, it, I don't think it's related to being educated, having a mobile device at this uh, day and age. Everyone okay. does have it, I think. Okay. Mm, but uh, uh, where will I find them? 
hopefully there are a lot of marketing uh, groups around uh, uh, in in different social media channels like telegram and facebook mm -hmm. if if people are uh, genuine enough uh, they they will actually answer to them and uh, i think i will find a lot of people that uh, that are uneducated and uh, who might have who might have not completed secondary school mm -hmm. Okay, great. And that's a great thought process that you're having there. Okay, so I want you to ask yourself a question. Between sending them a questionnaire that they say they will fill, and you have two days, right? Okay. Or side chatting them and asking them questions in a way that is conversational, which one do you think will be more effective? Uh, due to the limited time, I, I would rather pick the first choice. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I would try to post the questionnaire uh, on on different and uh, a lot of uh, social media channels mm -hmm. and uh, i think i'll receive at least uh, we are required uh, to have uh, three three responses uh, from uh, each uh, team member right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah so i think i think i think from uh, like if we are four 12 responses will, will do, would suffice. So surely I can get 12 responses from these uh, groups. Okay. Uh, why haven't you done it so far then? Uh, basically, I haven't had uh, a lot of conversation or interaction with my group members. Mm -hmm. uh, but I was working with uh, my other group, the group that I started with, uh, when I first began the training, and the handling both groups was not easy or manageable for me, you know. Okay. So I was, I'm still working with the first group I had, and uh, I had already raised that question to you if you have checked. You yeah, know, I've, I've had an opportunity message. to read. Yeah. 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 So, here's the thing, Milky, and I think this is also important information for everyone here. The main reason why we put you in groups is because it is very likely if you get to choose your own groups, you will choose people within your comfort zone. Okay? Yeah, you will choose people yeah. you know, people you like, people you get along with already. Okay? okay? Instead of work, you don't get an option to choose who your colleagues are all the time. In fact, most of the time, you get that chosen for you. And it is also very likely you will work with people in different time zones. You know? And you mm. will have to be able to learn to collaborate with people in different time zones. Okay, you will learn. You will have to learn to collaborate with people you may do, you don't talk to, of often or ever. It's important. So if we allow you guys to just choose, oh, this is my brother, this is my sister, it's easy. It doesn't stretch you as much as you need to be stretched to become work ready. So this part of the process is an important simulation of what you should expect and anticipate once you go out into the world of work, okay? So it may sound bothersome, it may sound overwhelming, it may sound unnecessary, but at one point in your life, you will remember that this is something that we tried to work with and help you with, and I hope you do. Okay, Milky? Yeah. So the recommendation yeah. you see, it sounds like an easy way out, okay? And to be honest, it will be a lot less work on us if we ask you guys figure it out. Pair yourselves up. Get yourselves a group of three. But it's not going to be very helpful to you as, you, as a professional and as someone we are hoping will walk into the world of work with confidence and with the skills and expertise that will serve your company. Does that make sense, Milky? Yes, it makes, it makes sense. Absolutely. But so within the within the limited time frame, uh, we couldn't bond enough and uh, get to work on things well. You know, mm -hmm. we have a lot I... of work on our plate. That's why we couldn't uh, work together. You know. Okay, I understand what you said about bonding, but a lot of times when you're at work, you will have to work with people who are not your friends. You don't have to be chummy or brotherly. It's just part of the process. Okay, so this is literally what you can expect, legitimately. Bonding not required, there's just work that needs to get done, and you'll have to figure out how can I get it done 
even though I am not bonded. It's about learning what to do. Don't find ways why it can't work. Ask yourself, what, do I, what does it need to take for it to work? I hope that helps. Nebi, you had raised your hand. Please go on. Okay, uh, I have raised my hand to ask, uh, what if the group members didn't mm -hmm. respond? But when mm -hmm. I was raising, I, I've seen oh. the rocket chat. One of my group mm -hmm. members responded. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. So I, I don't have an question anymore. Okay. So, and uh, but thank you for bringing that up because it's also a very important point for us to address. We know that in some of the groups you are in, maybe you are the only person who's taking initiative. The rest of your group members are not. Okay. So submission of this work is going to be individual. We want for you to work in a group, to figure out things in a group, but you submit your own individual assignments, okay? But in the last paragraph, and this is something we're going to be adding onto the assignment, into the challenge document. In the last paragraph, we want you to say, this is what I contributed, X contributed this, Y contributed this, okay? So let's say maybe you Desmond and Milk are in one group, okay? All of you, all three of you will submit your individual assignments, okay, according to the challenge document. But in each of you, in each of your assignments, the last paragraph will have information, okay? So Nebius will say, I contributed XYZ, Desmond contributed XYZ, and Milky contributed XYZ, okay? Which means that if Desmond and Milky don't respond, Maybe you can say, I had to collaborate with a different group because Desmond and Milky did not contribute at all, or they were unable to contribute, or they did not respond to my attempt at reaching out, okay? Because at the end of the day, we, you can't drag someone into doing something they don't want to do or are unable to do. So uh, the last paragraph, and we will add this in the challenge document, we want you to say what you contributed and what other group members contributed. And if they did not contribute, you say they did not contribute. If you know the reason why, and it's an okay thing to say, you say the circumstances, okay? Then we are able to know, okay? Then we are able to keep a track of what happened. We are very invested in making sure we do what we can to help you thrive and to succeed. But we also know that the world is not ideal all the time. Challenges come up, groupmates go incognito. Sometimes you're supposed to be in a group, but you've got to tug it out alone. And such is life, okay? But we want to know that. At the end of the day, it's still personal responsibility. 100% personal responsibility. Figure out how to get the assignments done, and then let us know if your groupmates are part of it or not. I hope that understand that answers the question. But are there any other questions about either the design thinking? Okay, quick question. How many of you have read the data privacy uh, assignment that was posted? It's also due this Friday. That's a simple document. Not now. Okay, good. It is a simple document, pretty much self-explanatory. Fumbani, you've raised your hand as well. Okay, same. Good. Are there any questions regarding that? Any questions at all? Are there any questions regarding the data privacy or ethics assignment or the design thinking assignment? We've not totally completed the design thinking. Behigo, please go on. So, about the design thinking, okay. I read the question and the document. Mm -hmm. uh, so, it, it asks us, mm -hmm. so pretty much I understand, but it asks us to, you know, kind of co uh, have an interview with uh, people that are concerned. So, what does it mean? Who do we interview? Mm -hmm. Who do we ask the questions? to see the insights. Thank you for the question you've asked. Who can answer Behigo? Who in the room can answer Behigo? 
You guys know the answer, but who can answer him? Who would like to answer him? I was hoping to see several hands raised. Who can answer him? Okay, Milky, I'll have to choose you because you are here and you had a series of questions and there's a lot of back and forth. I want you to answer him and uh, Sim to answer him as well. Behigo, please repeat your question. So that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, in design thinking, uh, the first part is the emphasizing or the understanding or like putting ones in someone else's shoes and really trying to understand, not just hearing them say, but uh, putting ourselves in their place and trying to understand what the problem is, uh, which is kind of having an interview in depth. So who do we interview regarding to our task? Mm -hmm. That was my question, Milky. Okay, thank you. Um, okay. Uh, um, based on what I am planning to do, uh, as I was discussing it earlier, um, I think people who, who didn't uh, complete secondary school didn't get the chance to complete secondary school are part of the problem i think based on my analysis or thought process uh, and uh, i'm thinking that's the group that we need to cover and uh, ask about these issues mm -hmm. okay so, so the unfit project talks about in in the specific countries there are countries mentioned in the document so is talking about what happened there and how they come up with the solution to tackle that problem. So am I supposed to go to, to my local community who, who has a related problem and interview them? Uh, as, as I mentioned earlier, it depends on how you collect, how you think, uh, how you're planning to collect the data, you know. If you're planning to collect the data personally, you need to uh, find or locate places that you will find this kind of people or the group that you want to analyze or conduct a survey about. Uh, based on my, uh, based on my analysis, and I'm, I'm trying, I'm trying to get this information using a survey and hopefully, hopefully I will get people that uh, haven't completed the, uh, I haven't completed secondary school. Mm -hmm. Okay, if I could mention something here, as I told you, it's not only the first part, the emphasized part is not just having a data or knowing how many or what or why. You have to understand on the emotional level. You know, mm -hmm. they may tell you it's because of this, but actually it's not because of that. You have to figure that out by having a deep, the conversation from what I have understood about design thinking. Mm -hmm. But uh, thanks a lot. I thought uh, we, we were supposed to do uh, the design thinking based on only the document, the paper that we were given. Mm -hmm. So now I, I'm, I'm clear about it. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Milky. Mm -hmm. uh, My pleasure. Okay. Sam, uh, Sam Michael, is there anything you'd like to add to answer? Behigo's question. Sim, are you here? Okay, uh, who else has another question? Thank you for asking Behigo and Milky for addressing it. And remember, the ideal person to talk to is someone who's directly or has directly uh, or has directly suffered from the problem you're trying to solve, okay? In this case, women, not just people, women who have not had a chance to go to high school, okay? And, but the second other group of people you can also talk to are people who work with women who've not gone to high school or people working in women organizations or education for women type organizations, anything like that. They may have insight that you could use 
that can give you additional things about the work what they've tried and has not worked and everything else so yeah who has any other question regarding that or the data ethics assignment we will not have a tutorial on data ethics so i'm hoping you guys have read the assignment but just a quick run through this data ethics assignment is meant to help you consider how the role that you will be having as a as a mechan as a machine learning engineer will affect will affect your users and some of the things that you have to consider when either collecting data or using data so right now we have a very we have we're in a regime where consumers are very sensitive about their data collection a company like apple right now asks you that x app wants to collect your information allow them or don't so it gives an opportunity to choose before it was automatic the moment you use an app that app could collect your data you know dropping cookies all over the place or could follow you around when you're using other apps it was automatic you could be able to switch it off in the settings but in, before you switch it off it was everyone who wants to collect data on you could follow you around the net sometimes even in your messages sometimes even when you're not using the app it could follow you around everywhere and the information they could collect about you as a person would be incredibly fast but apple made made a specific movement uh, made a specific policy that would require you to confirm that yes i want to share my data with this company okay so those are some of the things that show how the world has changed when it comes to consumers and how they value their data okay for me personally some apps i allow them to follow me around for example i do a lot of shopping on instagram or online and if i search for something on instagram i want them to keep showing me recommendations of that thing so i can figure out what my options are from this store or that store or what store so for me when they asked me allow instagram to follow you around i clicked allow but for some other apps you know i clicked don't allow because i do not see any benefit allowing them would give me apart from them having more data than I wanted to give them. So these are some of the things that we want you to consider when you're thinking about the data privacy assignment. Why? Because part of empathizing with your users is asking yourself, will this help my users? Will this harm their users? So the case study that we've given you in the data ethics assignment is one of computers, okay? and being able to get data from the computer of the person who's browsing that website for instance okay if you as the person who's in charge of getting that data it asks you is this something that you need if yes why if no what are some of the alternative ways you can be able to serve your clients over and above getting their data those are some of the things that are important to consider asking your questions regarding do we really need this or do we not okay and it's not just in terms of making a business case out of it but it's also in terms of what do the laws say about what i can and cannot do because with the gdpr guidelines it's it's a guideline that works mostly in western countries okay but that guideline literally determines what you're allowed to do and what you're not allowed to do and we've linked it in the ethics assignment you will read it you will see what within the bounds of the gdpr guidelines respond to the case study what can you do what can't you do and if you can't do this how will it affect the business okay this assignment is particularly important because if you guys attended Eugene's, uh, Eugene's town hall, he said, yes, machine learning can be a means in its, you know, can be an end in itself, but a lot of times it's a means to an end. And you shouldn't always jump to yes, machine learning 
But what are some of the other things that could lead to that, for example, could give you the same outcomes? So this is an exercise in critical thinking and in empathy with your users and what is required of you and what the laws say about what you're allowed to do and what you're not allowed to do. Policy. Mm -hmm. Yes, Cindy, thank you very much. Uh, mm -hmm. I have a question. Yeah. What uh, do we think is going to be after this big data and machine learning? What are we thinking will come next? That's my question. After what? What will come next after what? After, after this, uh, this fourth uh, industrial revolution, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What will come next? Because there, there wasn't in in the years like 2025, there was no big data data yeah. science. It mm -hmm. it was not. It was there in the school, but the the company was not applying that like yeah. like Facebook are doing today, and all these companies are using the data for their business. Yeah. But my question is, mm -hmm. what will come next after the data and all these things? Mm. That is just an interesting question. Okay. I don't know who wants to answer policy. Please raise your hand. But I have an opinion that is, uh, I don't know, out there. But I think that being a human being and things being done by human beings will come back in fashion. Like, there'll be a period of time where being solved by robots will be really fancy and really exciting. But the really fancy restaurants will go back to having human servers. So I think there may be a secular thing and maybe the world will call it that way. But I feel like there's a way in which history does repeat itself when it comes to some of these things, okay? There are some places right now where people are already fighting against self-checkout, you know? Uh, some stores where you go check out for yourself and then Amazon automatically deducts from your card or the amount of money is gets automatically deducted from your card. Or as you walk out the door, you know, your card gets automatically deducted with the amount of money that's already there. But some stores, some users really just want the human touch. In some places, I don't have the data for this. And this is why, and I'll just say this, guys, if you have an assignment, please add statistics and data there. Okay. If you don't add the data, it's just an opinion. And everyone has an opinion. Okay. So I'll just say I do not have the data on it. But if it was an assignment I was doing, I would, I would probably get whatever. Things to do with loneliness and mental health are becoming more and more paramount now more than ever. And it was very clear in the COVID period. People are tired of Zoom calls, sadly. They're here to stay, but online physical trainings and conferences will soon come back to be one of the things that are premium. And why I think this is it, I don't know about you guys, at some point having bacon and sausages and things was for rich families. But then you see people are going back to eating arrow roots and people who can afford healthy food like arrow roots and traditional vegetables. Now that is a bit fancy, you know. So, of course, unless you're living in rural Africa. But I feel like there's a way history repeats itself. So I don't know anyone who else who has an opinion on it. I also don't want to take time. Uh, we have around 10 minutes uh, for your technical tutorial but anyone who has an opinion on it or any more questions I'm happy to answer but Palsy, do you have any opinion on what comes next after machine learning and the big data and all the tech stuff I, I, I join you Cindy I have okay. the same opinion with you. Okay. <laughs> I'm glad so yeah Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, anyone with any more questions? But Cindy, I want a student to reply to my question, to give me an answer. I know you know everything, but I need this. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Anyone who can give insight on what? Please. Post yeah. Okay, let me go. Let me pick one. Yes. Go, Behigu. Mm -hmm. So, I guess uh, the time for quantum computing and supercomputers is coming and many okay. things will change along that yeah. literally many things the security will will crash into washes like you can crack mm -hmm. any kind of encryptions 
Mm-hmm. And that would be a big, a bigger part of our lives, I hope. So mm-hmm. that's what I have but, in mind. But after that period in time, what do you think will happen? Because that's still in the big data fourth industrial revolution space, you know, where a spoon can communicate to the TV and I've had their Wi-Fi enabled washing machines. So that, know, that really terrifies me, you know, the yeah the superior computers will yeah. take over and the ai the algorithms and a lot of uh, iot using uh, cloud computing and hence the ai in the storage and performance and i think mm-hmm. everything will collapse <laughs> <laughs> yeah so That's i guess what i see. yeah okay thank you for sharing anyone else wants to share before we call it a, a session I think after that point in time comes getting computers or not computers like microwaves that don't have Wi-Fi will be even more expensive than those that do, you know? So I think things will come back full circle, but I don't know if I'll be old at that time or dead, but who knows? Uh, that's why I'm keeping my things the old fashioned way. <laughs> That'll be expensive then. I'll be rich. Yes, yes, yes. You know? Yes. So that's how I see it because it will be a security issue. So, uh, yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, I am really terribly, genuinely looking forward to reading your submissions for both the design thinking assignment and the data ethics. I'm excited to see what you guys come up with. We are more or less done with marking your other assignment and you should be receiving your results today if you haven't yet. And also looking forward to the whole leaderboard thing. So, uh, doodles. If you have any other questions, please just DM me in the chat box and we'll do it. I think decentralization is gaining momentum. The blockchain tech is being applied everywhere. That is really good. That's a good point. That's a good point. I don't think I'd even thought about it that way. Thank you for for sharing that. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Well, wow.